Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering Oracle Open World 2015. Brought to you by Oracle. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here for day three of exclusive Oracle Open World coverage here on Howard Street in San Francisco. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm with my co-host Brian Grace Lee, our cloud analyst at wikibon.com, part of our research team with theCUBE. Our next guest is Juan Loez, the Senior Vice President of the Systems Technology Group at Oracle. Welcome back to theCUBE, great to see you. Nice to be here. So in January, we talked about the engineered systems. Um, and we had a great, great uh, showing at Redwood Shores, but here at Oracle Open World, it's at the center stage. Cloud is obviously the key message, but under the hood of cloud is Exa. Exa this, Exa data, right. high performance systems, the super cluster, all these engineered systems right. is the engine of innovation. Kind of abstracted away, but still high performance. What's the news from your standpoint this week? Uh, there's a lot of news this week, so it's hard to really <laughs> summarize it all. What's your favorite? Let's rank them up. What's your uh, top well, favorite? Well, there's a number of things. You know, we've talked about our new exosystems that we've shipped. Uh, we have our new M7 Spark chip that we're shipping. We're talking about our 12.2 database, which is shipping next year, our next generation Oracle database. Uh, so there's a lot of different topics that we're covering this week. Uh, In-memory database, another really huge topic. Uh, and security, security is a very big deal, it's becoming a bigger deal, it's a very big topic. So I think the security is the, on the, the gem of the story in my mind here at the show, but also what's getting a lot of the headlines is taking the power away from IBM, the Exa power uh, with Intel on stage, very interesting play there. What's the update with that? with that program and that initiative? Well, we have an initiative uh, for customers that are still running power systems from IBM uh, that to move them over to our exasystems. So we're working with Intel. Uh, we have very compelling message and we decided to put together a program to kind of get over the inertia of moving uh, and make it easy for customers to move also and provide some services and, and help them move to a more modern platform. You know, when we talked in January, one of the things that Dave Vellante and I and the folks at Wikibon always talk about when we do the Cube is, because we love the sports metaphor, we saw the Warriors on the keynote this morning, um, is the sports metaphors. Are you playing offense or defense? And you're either going to grow share, protect share, um, you know, it's kind of offense or defense. It's obvious Oracle's playing offense. They're taking yes. an aggressive approach. How are you guys going to grow your share on the database piece? How is the role of engineered systems as part of that? Because obviously cloud's the main message, but the real plutonium behind it is the, uh, the, the engine of innovation, which is the engineered systems. How are you guys growing that share and how is it going? Give us some, give us some you know, the vision, the tactics, the strategy, and then some results. Yeah, so it's very simple. We're just providing a better product, innovating across all the different dimensions. So we've long had the best database in the world and we keep enhancing that. So I mentioned we have our 12.2 database, we had our 12.1 database, we've added multi-tenant capabilities to the database, we've added in-memory computing into our database. Those are very big features. We've done it in a very effective fashion, it makes it easy for customers to adopt. Uh, we have our engineer systems, we're building a huge amount of intelligence into the database platform that makes it uh, much more effective, much more cost effective, much higher performance, better availability, better security. And it's very unique in the industry. Uh, there's other people that could do it, but no one else is doing it. So the integration of hardware and software to, perform, to, to um, produce a much more effective platform is very unique to Oracle. Uh, and then you mentioned cloud. Cloud is a big deal. So we've launched our database in the cloud, and just recently we went production with Exadata in the cloud, which is a, a very big milestone in the world of cloud. Um, Exadata in the cloud, for the first time, we have a first class uh, mission critical database system, both software and hardware, that runs on the cloud, that can run any workload, whether it's OLTP, analytics, uh, in-memory, consolidation, any workload. It's a very proven platform. It's way beyond anything else that people have in the And cloud. a lot of cores, a lot of more, more everything, more yes. cores, more in-memory, yes. all that stuff. Every kinda year deep. we have more powerful platform, more powerful processors, much faster flash, much more flash, faster networking. Uh, and a huge amount of software innovations also. You know, we talk with the Wikibon team and we geek out all the time and I'm going to use this term, you know, loosely so I want you to not to, to go too deep on it, but I want to use it as a way to compare this modern era of, of computing. The mainframe yeah, was great, right? We saw the mainframe, but now the cloud is one big mainframe. Look at the cloud, it's a, it's a distributed mainframe, all this power, but there's not just single-threaded apps. You have a lot of other things going on. You have open source on top of it, a lot of things moving on, but the in-memory is a huge deal, right? And, and 
and security, which we'll get to in a second, but I want to talk about in memory. When you start to see the in memory expanding, you're talking about a developer that's looking at essentially a distributed mainframe. And you, so there's a lot of there's a lot of power with the with the cloud. Mm -hmm. Talk about the, the role of the in memory. How does that affect the dynamics of this powerful cloud opportunity? And how does how do you talk to customers about that? Yeah, so part of our offerings on the cloud are, are, are brand new. I mean, we've had it for about a year, in-memory database technology. So it's, it's cutting edge technology. It uses the latest you know, vector processing, columnar formats. We have a whole bunch of special algorithms in there. And really what it provides is dramatic performance improvements and, much, and very simple to use also. So it makes things, you have to tune a lot less, you have to tweak a lot less because the power of the, of the platform just makes everything run fast no matter what. Uh, and that's all included in all our database offerings now on the cloud. So we get cutting edge uh, in-memory technology as well as multi-tenant technology, as well as everything that we've had for the last 30 years. So one of the interesting things about our Exadata platform in the cloud is it includes everything that Oracle's developed for the last three decades. So all the features, all the functionality, availability, security, everything, it's all there. So on, in, on premise, we sometimes factor it and we say, well, you can get a basic Oracle and you can get a, not get a little bit better Oracle and we have another option you can add and another option you can add. Uh, for our Exadata in the cloud, what we decided to do is put all our technology in there. So every single feature, management, security, performance, scaling, in-memory, multi-tenant, it's all there. It's all available for customers. It's all included in the cloud database platform. Well, the counter argument to that, and I want to drill down on this, because this is Exadata is really a success story in our mind. We talk to customers all the time, and they're doing stuff with Exadata that, quite frankly, it's pretty amazing, and, and they're kind of kind of hiding us. They have other vendors pitching best of breed, best of breed. We have the best of breed storage. We have the best of breed recovery. We have the best of breed mm -hmm. categorical mm -hmm. product. That's their that's right. their story. But it's not so much about best of breed anymore. When you start looking at integrated stacks and integrated workloads, you need that horsepower. So talk about the dynamics of Exadata, and where have you guys been successful? Because it really is a huge success story for Oracle Exadata. Mm -hmm. Where is it being successful? And then you know, highlight that example on premise, and then talk specifically about where that moves to the cloud. Okay, sure. So you asked a number of different questions there. So first of all, in terms of integration and best of breed, uh, what's important thing to understand is Exadata is best of breed at every level. So we have the best processors, the fastest Intel and Spark processors. We have the fastest flash, the PCIe flash in the industry. We have the fastest network, InfiniBand network. So it actually is best of breed across every layer. So there's really nothing you're giving up in, in return for integration. It's not like you have to say, well, I got to choose either best of breed or an integrated system. Uh, we really are best of breed at every layer, and in fact, beyond what other people that claim are best of breed. We have hear that too. Uh, and then, and then we, we put it all together, uh, and there's kind of two aspects of it. Uh, one is intel integration. So people talk about, well, we integrate all the components, and that's important, and we do a lot of that. But we go well beyond integration. What we do is, we uh, bring intelligence, basically database intelligence to all layers of the stack. So it's not just saying, well, this component, we're going to integrate it with that component. We're crossing the components. We're writing a, tons of specialized software to take advantage of being able to cross all the boundaries to give very dramatic benefits to customers. And you're moving um, all that to the cloud? Yes. Uh, and in terms of you know where it's been successful, um, that's an interesting question because a lot of other products are specialized. Yeah. Like they'll say, okay, we're a specialty analytics product. We're a specialty OLTP product. We're a specialty streaming product. We're a special this product, that product. Um, because our database has been around for over 30 years, uh, we, don't, we don't have specialty products. We've built all these algorithms. So what's important to have is is uh, special algorithms for all these different workloads. So we have special analytics algorithms, special OLTP algorithms, special in-memory algorithms, multi-tenant algorithms, but they're all in the same product. So you get the benefit of having all of these things put together. So you don't have you know, sort of a car that goes fast but only carries one person, or, or, you know, or a car that's big but slow, <laughs> or a car that's very inefficient. You get all of it in one package. Um, and in Exadata, we've been very successful across the board. So we have giant OLTP sites running, e-commerce sites, um, uh, financial trading sites, so the most mission critical sites. Uh, we have giant data warehouses running on Exadata. We have huge consolidated systems on Exadata. Uh, we have giant SaaS clouds running on Exadata. For example, in the Oracle SaaS so cloud, it's working. entirely on <laughs> It's totally working. Yes. <laughs> so we're not specialized. So it's yeah. one thing when you ask about where we've been successful. We've been successful across the board in all information management, and customers benefit from having mixed workloads. So not most people have a mix of workloads. They're not pure OLTP, pure analytics, and they all want security, availability, management. All that comes in the package. So you don't have to have the trade-offs. You don't have to specialize. 
you don't have to say, well, I got this pen, but it only writes this one thing. It's a general purpose system that handles everything in a best of breed fashion. It's a big deal. It's hard to do. It's taken, yeah, yeah. we can only do this because we have thousands of engineers working on it and we've been working for decades. Right. So on the application side, we've seen this trend, they call it DevOps. It's you know, the operations team, the developers being much more tight. Uh, you know, Thomas talked about this idea of DevOps deploying faster and faster. Hardware and software has sometimes been fairly separated, the ops teams and the development teams, application. How did you guys get those teams to get over the hump to say, I want an integrated hardware and software system? Because in a lot of cases, they were siloed before. What was the, what was the driving force that you find? That it's always been siloed. Uh, really, even in companies that have both software and hardware, it's really been very siloed. Um, and I think what really brought us together was a shared vision of, hey, we're going we're gonna to do this thing together. Um, and we started about five years ago. So, yeah. so a good example of that is the new Spark M7 chip that's just come out. Uh, we've been working very closely with the hardware team for over five years to get the database functionality built into that chip. And it's very unique. It's really, there's never been an enterprise software company that, that's driven the design of a computer chip before. It's never happened. I mean, that, I mean we get excited by that. I mean, this is yeah. like, you know, for tech geeks that love to look under the hood, right. this is a big deal. Talk about that end-to-end -end security play because when John Fowler was on, he was like, man, we had this in 2005 at Sun and it's always been kind of hanging around, but now with all the pressure of security and with the fact that perimeter-based security is pretty much, everyone is acknowledging that's a flawed strategy, you want to have security everywhere, but now you have encryption on the chip end-to-end. That's a huge deal. Right, yeah. How would you describe that? I mean, it's really kind of not getting the level of play that we're seeing out there in the past couple of days. I mean, people keep people on crocking of it, so share your opinion um, and insight into that, the, the magnitude of that yeah. opportunity. So, so security, everybody knows this is a big deal. I mean, there's more and more hacks going on all over the world. Nobody's safe. I mean, that the bottom line today is nobody's safe. And there's bad news, which is, we've talked about in-memory database, yeah. okay? As we move databases into memory, we get terabytes of data in memory. The security gets worse. It's more vulnerable. It's a lot more vulnerable. So data in memory is actually a lot more vulnerable than data on disk. So we're actually moving uh, in terms of technology into an in-memory world, but that's actually going to hurt security. And that's why when we in initiated our in-memory database project, we also initiated a parallel project to secure that data in memory and to do it in a very fine-grained fashion with very little overhead. And that's the project that we started with the, with the um, Spark CPU team. We said, once we move all this data into memory, it's going to be enormously vulnerable. We're going to take a giant step backward in terms of security, and nobody wants to take a step backward in terms of security. So we have to figure out a way to make it more secure once it's in memory. Uh, and so that's what we've done. We've integrated uh, the security checks at the fine-grained memory level into the chip. So when someone allocates memory, it's automatically secured for just that user. No one else can touch that memory. It must be super um, exciting for you guys because now, you know, with the market the way it is, you're like, oh yeah, we did all this great stuff. We did, you just put a big rock off your back. You can solve a big problem with security. And then data in motion comes in. But now they throw another rock on your back and say, fix this problem. We don't want to lose any data. So I want it secure, end-to-end -end with encryption, and I don't want to lose anything. Right. And by the way, we want real time, everything's in motion. Yes. So that's another challenge. So talk about that because you guys have that zero loss product. Mm -hmm. How does that connect in? So uh, you got to serve a lot of masters here. Again, back to your specialty yeah. comment. Yeah, so we have a lot of different efforts going on. Uh, what you mentioned, there's a zero data loss recovery appliance. It's the only smart backup and recovery appliance on the market. Uh, we've built, again, the database, we put the database smarts into the platform. And you know, two of the big benefits of it are you don't lose data. So as databases generate data, it automatically synchronizes all the new data to the recovery appliance. So if the primary database dies for whatever reason, the site dies, you will not lose any data. It's the only product in the market that can say that. And how does that appliance evolve over the past year since we last talked? What's the, what's the update on terms of traction? Can you give any anecdotal? Um... Yeah, so we've had some very, it's one of our fastest growing products ever. Uh, there's been a very large amount of interest. I mean, the prospect of not losing data is actually a big deal to customers, believe it or not. <laughs> you know, financial customers, to retail customers, kind of not losing data is a big deal. So there's been a lot of interest, a lot of traction. We've had uh, very good success with that product. Awesome. Uh, you know, um, earlier we were talking about how quickly the, the Spark chip is refreshing. Like six new ones in five years. Um, you know, new Exadata systems are coming out every year, you know, yes. here. 
how do you keep up between, the, you know, lots of talk this week about, you know, the Oracle public cloud and what you run on premise, exactly the same hardware, you've got that system compatibility. How do you keep, how do you help customers make sure that what you're going to put in your cloud, which is going to go as fast as you can, can, can be in sync with something, an asset that they typically keep longer than that? Are there programs to help them refresh the on-prem hardware to keep up with the, the cloud hardware? Or how do you, how do you just make sure that compatibility is already always there? Yeah, so, you know, the reason why, you know, one of the things that Oracle's always done is we have one code base. So we don't have a separate code base for cloud and on-premise. It's the exact same product that runs in both places. And that's key to keeping complete compatibility. Not everybody does that. Sometimes people go off and write something different for the cloud. What we've done is we've expanded, we've enhanced our database. Just like we've done for in-memory, for multi-tenant, we've expanded it to the cloud. We've written a lot of uh, cloud-specific code in the last couple of years, but all that also goes to on-premises customers. So for example, for the cloud, the security requirements are even higher in a public cloud than in a, than in a private cloud. So we've implemented a lot of security technology and all that's moved back into on-premises also. So we want to keep these platforms synchronized so there's no gap, there's, no, there's nothing you can do on-premise that you can't move to the cloud or vice versa. Gotcha. Talk about the offense strategy, and I want to get back to that because this is really fundamental here. For me at Oracle Global World, I, I think, yeah, five years ago when we were here, you know, you saw Larry up on stage, you almost see him going, hmm, we read the world's changed. It's kind of a lull, the eye of the hurricane. It was kind of like, the ecosystem's like, what's going on? And then that shit was happening five years ago. So now you're five years in, things are really, really moving fast at Oracle. The offensive strategy is to, okay, let's move to the cloud. And you'd say you're disrupting yourselves. I mean, Oracle is disrupting itself to get the new territory, the new modern era, because client-server, you know, it's had its time. We're now in the cloud. So talk about internally, when you meet with your team, share, share the guiding philosophy that you, you know, say to the troops uh, internally, hey, this is how we're going to disrupt ourselves. We're going to take the Oracle stuff. Obviously, you mentioned that. But there's new stuff out in the horizon. You mentioned DevOps, it's open source. I saw you know, Thomas Curian on stage talking about open technologies. So now you have a blend of new systems opportunities that will extend into the marketplace with open. So what is that speech that you give the troops? How do you talk to your teams? What's the guiding principles internally when you, when you talk to your folks? Well, it's really very simple. You know, we live in an industry that's in constant change. So if you look at the history of Oracle, Oracle's been the leader in enterprise uh, software for decades. Uh, and there's very few companies that can say that. A lot of companies kind of have a little spike and then kind of fade away. Oracle's been the leader for all the years because we embrace change. So every year, we look at it and we say, okay, here's our next challenge, here's our next challenge. And that's what's fun about it. That's what's fun about being in this industry. We, we, we never get to sit still, we never get to basically keep doing the same thing. There's always a new challenge. You talk about in-memory, multi-tenant, cloud, engineered systems, software and silicon, all these things. So the change is coming rapidly at us. And that's the fun of the, of, of the, the people that are in my team love that. And yeah. you know, we learn to love change. That's really I, I what it's all I asked some of your about. peers the same question. It's a really interesting response because it seems to me, at least from an outsider looking at Oracle that your game elevates when the competition's hot. Because if you're kind of standing around, the competition also is active, that brings more change requirements to the product teams, right? So, you know, one comment was, I said, um, so are you guys bringing your A game now that there's a lot of competition? Like, no, we always had our A game. I'm like, okay, do you elevate your A game, A plus game? Is that the culture in Oracle? Is that kind of the, the vibe internally? Is that, hey, people embrace the competition? You know, is it, is that uh, yeah, the- Yeah, I mean, the, that's part of it. And, you know, the other part of it is, you know, learning how to take advantage of scale. Like for example, having a hardware team, if you just have a hardware team sitting in some other building somewhere and you never talk to them, it actually doesn't help a whole lot. You, they may as well be in another company. Yeah. Uh, what really separates us is bringing that scale, bringing these, these groups together and making a brand new breakthrough, breakthrough products. Uh, that's what it's really the &A, all about. The M&A has been great too. You guys have done a great job with the acquisitions, bringing that into the large scale. Okay, to wrap up, I want to ask you, what's, what should people expect from Exadata this year? Looking forward out here at Oracle Global, a lot of news, a lot of things happening. What should people expect from Exadata in the coming year? Uh, what people should expect is, is more innovation in Exadata. So every year we're going to refresh the hardware platform, we're going to take advantage of the latest CPUs, flash memory, everything. But also, we're constantly adding new software capabilities. For example, we're moving a lot of our in-memory technology into flash. So there's always new software capabilities that we're adding to Exadata. And so the platform will continue to differentiate, will continue to separate from generic platforms. So it's going to get better and better. And customers that have bought Exadata, they'll be able to take advantage of all that new software capability in their existing platform. Juan, final, final question. I was with the final, final. I want to get the good guess on. F the vibe of the show, for the folks watching, what's your take of Oracle Open World this year? What's the sentiment? What's the vibe? What's, what's the main story? Obviously, cloud is everywhere. But like from your perspective, share 
uh, some color on what's happening here, here at Oracle Open World. Well, one of the great things about Open World is it's a highly technical conference. So the vibe here is great. I love being with our technical customers. They want to hear about the new technology. They're very excited. Actually, our customer base is extremely excited about the cloud innovations, software in silicon, our new uh, engineered systems, new database releases. Uh, it's, it, the world is constantly getting better and customers are loving it. Hey, Juan Loeza here, Senior Vice President of the Engineered Systems Group here at Oracle. We're on Howard Street. They're closing down San Francisco for 60,000 people here at Oracle Open World. Go to siliconangle.tv to check out all the Q videos and go to crowdpages.co slash OOW15. All the content we're, we're pushing out live is going to be on that site. Trending stories, what's going on in the conversation space. Go there and check out, check out the conversation. It's Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of Oracle Open. We'll be right back with more after this short break.